welcome to Community Voices with Carla Lisa Thorne. Today I have a guest with me, Benjamin Wexler, and we're going to be talking about some wonderful things around health and bodies. And he has a wonderful book, and he is going to be sharing with us the title of his book, and he's going to be sharing with us the inspiration behind his book. I always like the authors to introduce themselves and share with them, share with us the wisdom behind their books. So welcome with us, Benjamin. Hi, Carly. Thank you for inviting me to be here. Uh, the title of my book is Change Your Body, Change Your Life, and it's available on my website at benwexler.com. So you want me to go into the story of the book? or I would like for you to share with us the inspiration behind the title of your book. That's why I don't like to share the titles. I always like people to share with us what was their inspiration behind the title of the book. Because, you know, a lot of people, when they go to write a book, there's some usually aha moment or... You know, there's, there's a creative process behind they, how they, you know, arrived at the title of the book. Do you know what I'm saying? Yes, I do. So what well, was your inspiration I, uh, behind the title of the book? Well, there, it's, it's quite a story for me, and it's an entirely new adventure for me. So that's how my life was changed by what I did. Um, I wrote the book because a lot of people that I'm around on a regular basis are really surprised when they see me the first time how much I changed physically and also how in shape I am. And I, um, being certified as a knowledge manager, one of the things that I practice when I talk to clients and so on is that if you're repeatedly a, a go-to person for knowledge, then write it down. Well, I finally decided I'm going to tell my story so that I could share it that way. And uh, it was quite an adventure to write the book as much as it was to produce the changes. So the reason for writing the book was to share my story with people who were continually asking me, how did I do it? Uh, change Your Body, Change Your Life is the story of uh, what happened three years ago when I was having a lot of health issues. I was overweight, uh, and I was going through several ways of managing high cholesterol and some other issues, and I was determined I wasn't going to do drugs at all. I didn't want to be on Lipitor, I didn't want to be on a maintenance drug for the rest of my life and I wanted to be healthy. So I started doing some research and um, one of the inspirations for me was Timothy Ferris's book The 4-Hour Body. I don't know if you're aware of the book but in it are a lot of tips and techniques for uh, losing weight or getting in shape quickly and one of the things that I was really interested in doing was kettlebells. The other thing was diet. Well, at that time, to purchase kettlebells to do the exercises were very expensive, and the traditional gyms didn't have kettlebells. And what I found out was that CrossFit gyms do. So I did some research, and I found a gym, and I found a trainer who is really quite brilliant what he's doing. And I went there, and in the... It's funny because in my first initial consultation, I almost died right there on the spot because I was at the time 54, 55 years old, and I could, I've could i never done anything athletic in my entire life. I've had some personal trainings in my life, and I've done exercises, but nothing like this. And so I'm laying on the floor, and I'm saying, are you sure you really want to do this? And in my conversations with the trainer, his name is Nate I, and it's, a, it's now called the Golden Age Strength Club, I uh, found out that all I needed to do was a little bit of personal training to get back in shape, and then he put me in the classes, and that's when it started. And within a year, my cholesterol went down 100 points without the use of drugs, and I lost 65 to 70 pounds. And uh, now people are saying, especially in the gym, they're looking at my arms and saying how jacked I look. Well, here I am, 57, and I, I was a guy when in high school, if I went to McDonald's and I ordered a milkshake, it would be a tug of war who would go through the straw. You know, I was that skinny. Uh, now the whole thing is different, and um, I have a whole new life. Uh, the interesting thing about the story is, though, that in the last year, as I'm getting more intense into the exercises and doing the weight training that we're doing, I discovered that I have more of a passion for music, which is actually what my training is. And it's becoming more and more 
of a yearning to participate in, and now I'm able to compose music, which I've never been able to do before. I'm also able to, to communicate with people on a deeper level. So I have a whole new life. People are paying attention to me in a way that they haven't before. Not that I wasn't a leader in my own circles, but now I'm more of a leader. People are saying I'm stronger. I'm, I'm expressing myself in a stronger way. And uh, it's just wonderful to having a, a healthy life as well as a passionate life. So I'd like to go back a little bit. So you live in Chicago and you're yes, considered a consultant. I'd like to go back to obviously you don't do writing for a full-time living. And I always find it curious because people always usually have a side job. And I know we can't say exactly everyone, you know, sometimes people do uh, some sort of consulting. So how would you say that your consulting that you do in the IT world, how does that lead into what you do with like how do those skills, how they prepared you, if you will, for what you do now? So, you know, you know what I mean? We always have some sort of job that we're doing that in some way those skills, whether it be customer service or, you know what I'm saying, they, they always somehow help you or have guided you or have helped you become in a way to where you have now. Like, you know, you say the body that you develop now and the skills that you've developed now has led you to, to now compose music. So how has your IT skills or your customer service skills or your management skills for whatever you're doing in your IT world, how has that helped you now be who you are and what you do now? That's a great question. Um, I actually have two or three careers at the same time. Exactly. So that's and I always I like to share that with people because obviously, like for example, I do a lot of consulting in business, but I also do a lot of private consulting, mm -hmm. if you will. And a lot of people don't like the word life coach, but I do in a way life coach consult with individuals, but I also do a lot of business consulting, and I do a lot of also metaphysics, which is bridging east and the west. You know, and I guess a lot of people do have multifaceted worlds, if you will. So I always like to bring that question up because. Some people do just have one particular thing to do. I find nowadays because of the economy or they're, they're segueing, segueing from working for somebody and branching out to being entrepreneurs, and so they're usually kind of doing two, two or three things to get there, to be on their own now, not working for somebody else. And especially people that are writers or in the creative arts, they usually do have one thing they're doing on the, on the side, if you will, where they have income coming in that they find that's steady or secure while they're doing the leap into their passion. Mm -hmm. So I'd love for you to share how you take the skills that have been maybe your mainstay of income while you're taking that leap of faith into your writing. All right. Well, all my life I've been a musician. And I've trained myself to be a music teacher. I wanted to teach in colleges uh, at the university level. And it just never worked out. Uh, at the time that I went into the market, there were a lot of factors involved why I didn't actually do that. But I was quickly brought into the technology world because I love computers. And I've always done a lot of consulting with people on how to use the computers. And my approach has always been the same. I try to empower the user to use the computer the way they want to use the computer in their world with their thinking. As time progressed, I've, I've been in the traditional corporate world, and now I am a trainer uh, for a major corporation, but I'm also, I also have my own business on the side where I do business and personal con consulting or coaching. And what I do is I help people understand how they learn and, and how they prefer to communicate and how to use that information to get to some kind of a truth or some kind of a marketable idea. I'm also a brainstormer. I'm also a pro creative problem solving. So at the corporate level, I will help with branding issues or help people get back to communicating who they are. On the personal level, I help people understand who they are so they can communicate more effectively in their own businesses. For me, there's no difference in all of those things. When I'm doing trainings, I'm working with an individual and I'm working with that person with the way they think and the way they communicate and how they use the computer the way that they need to use it right now and in, in, in with the way that they think or with the way whatever they need to do. I also do that for businesses. 
in my own personal consultation, there is a huge spiritual component in what I do. It is my fervent belief that every single person on earth has innate knowledge that they were born with that is unique to them, and it's their job to get that information out. My job is really to help a person get to that information, and that is a highly spiritual, almost psychic, and I, I, and I hesitate sometimes to use the word psychic, but for them it is a very evolutionary process and revealing process at the same time. This is beyond education. Education is something that I'm a proponent of. I love my education. I think it's great. But I found that it was my unique abilities and my unique knowledge that steered me towards my education process. So one of the gifts that I have is the ability to see what a person's potential is. And I bring that out of that person. And I also can help them understand how they think. So all of this is related to each other, and, and that's one of the reasons I'm writing, because something that I can do on a regular basis is express myself, and that's why I'm writing the books that I'm writing, the book that I'm writing, and the blog that I'm writing. It's an extension of my using that unique knowledge. And I like the way you said that. It's really beautifully said, and I do believe what you said because. I do believe that every single person does have a unique gift and a unique gift and skill. Mm -hmm. I think they are one and the same to give to the world. And I think we all are teachers for each other. And I think I think everyone's kind of drawn to a specific person in a way to mm -hmm. find that out. I think everybody has a mentor or teacher out there waiting for them. And like us, we also have people that we're drawn to. I think everybody, you know, I have someone that I talk to and I'm always learning from. I think there's many of them out there as we journey along and as we grow. And mm -hmm. so I think that's beautifully said. And I do believe everybody, whether they like to, whether it's read or if it's not writing, there are people that are either singing it or dancing it or mm -hmm. creating it in whatever form they like to create. Because some people, like I said, are auditory, some are visual, some are kinesthetic. And so I Absolutely. think they all are doing it in whatever form it is for them. Mm -hmm. and, um, yeah, so I think I, I love the arts, and I think it's beautiful that we all get to create or express in the various different ways that we do it. So that's yeah, very beautifully said. Thank you. I, and I think it, it, I do believe, like you said, some people don't like the word psychic. It may be too woo-woo for them. However, I actually just did a show, um, or actually, excuse me, not a show. I was just interviewed actually earlier today, and we were talking about that, the multi-sensory being and and intuition. He, I got asked, is everyone does everyone is everyone born with intuition, or is it a skill that we need to learn? And my answer to that was that yes, we're all born with intuition. The only difference between me or the, my interviewer, for example, was that are you? It's just, in other words, learning. It's like learning or. Uh, developing it more. That's the only difference. And the same thing with being you being psychic or another person being psychic is basically the difference between that is that someone's chosen to hone it more. That's all. We're all psychic. Every single person on this earth is psychic. The only difference is one person has chosen because they believe it more, they believe the word psychic, is that that person has chosen to hone that skill more. They've chosen to tune into it more. They've chosen to develop it. That's the only difference. That's my, at least that's my own personal belief. In the context that I um, use it within consulting, uh, am I a psychic? No, I, I don't claim anything like that. That's not what I meant. But for the people that I'm working with on an individual basis, it's almost that effect because there is that connection and it's not always based on the science of what we're observing at the moment. But I, I, I can tell when I'm working with a person like yourself, what kind of thinker they are. You know, are they visual? Are they analytical? Are they social? Or are they procedural? And how is it combined? And when I tell them that, it's almost like I had fortune telling cards in front of me and I'm telling them their future. That's the effect that it has. But that's unique knowledge. I've been trained in that. But I've learned how to hone it to the point where I don't need um, a lot of information to understand what that is. I, uh, one of my clients can train a fly. 
if I were to ever say to him that that's a psychic ability, he would probably slug me. But I watched it. He held out his hand just like this, and there was a fly in the room, and eventually the fly came to his finger. And he put it on his shoulder and stayed on his shoulder for a good 30 minutes. How did that happen? All right, that's a unique ability. Um, I, I've seen people uh, do miraculous things with their natural skills that they have but they didn't think that they were anything that could be applied to anything else and that's part of my job so um, the hardest thing that I find for myself is, is to consult with myself and to do what I do for other people in my own life so when I went to this gym which is unlike any other gym it's not a CrossFit gym but that's what it was when I went there but he um, transformed the gym into a, uh, a strength training gym and what we do is we exercise with free weights there's nothing else in the gym and uh, when my sisters heard that I was putting a bar on my back up to uh, 275 pounds and doing a squat or that I could deadlift 300 pounds they're going what happened to my brother <laughs> he became a strong man the, the thing is these are and these are things I describe in the book these are exercises that use the entire body all the time, the entire time that you're exercising. Um, and it's so complete and releasing that there's a metaphor with life there. You know, the, the, the phrase raising the bar for excellence, I know what that means. And when you're face to face with the bar of steel and you're moving that steel, there's no better feeling. And uh, by working my body, which is the opposite of my head, I can get to my heart, which is where my information is. And that's where some of my greatest inspirations happen. So I would wish that for every human being, is that they could get healthy, not have to rely on the medical community to live from day to day without pain, without suffering, and uh, eating natural foods, unprocessed foods, uh, I've had I have my own health issues. I'm over 50. I said that three times. I think I said I was 57. Yes, there are days when I hurt, and I hurt from the exercise, but I don't feel anything like arthritis. I have some other problems that have not manifested at all since I changed my diet and changed my health, and it's it's a freeing experience. So that's what the book is about. And that's beautiful. I would, and I, I like you wish for everybody to live as as naturally as healthy as possible. Um, I've been through a similar journey as you as you. Uh, I and so I I can relate. I'm actually re going through that journey again. Um, since I I I I'm got, I decided to go through several more surgeries and I'm re going through that journey again. So I'm looking forward to being free once again. So I, yeah, I'm really looking forward to going through that. I've had to go through that uh, several times. So it, it it is it's a very liberating experience to uh, have your body completely free and mm -hmm. and not to experience any pain in your body and and just to have your body completely free and released. And, and exercise is, is an amazing, liberating experience on many multifaceted levels. If people don't get the serotonin that it boosts the, you know, in your brain when you have that serotonin pumping, and mm -hmm. it relieves your, your mind from depression, and you sleep better, and just all these things that are going on in your body chemistry-wise that people don't get, and the endorphins that it creates that natural high that you have. So it is an amazing, amazing thing. Mm -hmm. um, when you're, it, 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 I don't think people realize that when you are overweight, what it does to your body, the chemicals that it, that brings you down, and when people wonder why they're so depressed and why they don't want to get up, and it's just kind of this never-ending cycle. So um, yeah, I totally get it. Um, and I have a whole piece that, that's actually online for my journey from going from 200 pounds to 125 pounds. So oh wow, um, yeah, it's uh, yeah, um, I I've been that journey. Uh, I've had 29 surgeries in my life, so uh, unfortunately there are times when, when my body rebels because I've had, I've, had I've, I've done the Western path and Eastern path, and I um, unfortunately my path is a little complicated where sometimes I have to do Western medicine, even though I know all the Eastern paths, and I, I actually use a lot of Eastern medicine uh, to, and I don't, I don't, I don't even want to use the word medicine. However, um, mine's a little more complicated where I have to do both and, 
So um, I just got done with um, three more surgeries. So I'm so excited that now I've got clearance to go back to my to the gym and um, and uh, yeah. So I'm real excited. I get to I get to do that again. I get to go back and I'm really looking forward to getting those endorphins pumping. And um, I'm so excited. I can't wait. But well, uh, yeah, it's fascinating. So I'm really fascinating. On that. Huh? Congratulations on that. Oh yeah, I'm real excited. I am so excited. It's like beyond excitement. So, I will I will say this, the most gratifying moment I had through this whole journey was for a year my doctor was really concerned about my cholesterol. Now I have an excellent doctor, he and I have a great relationship, I have a lot of respect for traditional medicine so I don't even want to uh, appear that I'm against traditional medicine at all, but for a year I was doing quarterly blood checks because of my cholesterol. It got up to 290 and that's when he said, all right, I can't tolerate this. You have to be on statin drugs. And what I didn't tell you is that my father died of a heart attack when he was 46 and I was nine years old. So that's hanging over me every time I go into medical office. We have to do, um, I'm sorry, EKG. Yeah. And I'm, I'm going, this is not something I'm accepting for myself at all. There will never be that kind of issue for me. That's what my thinking is. But I said, give me one more chance. And so I went to the gym. I went through this transformation. When I walked into their office, it was nine months. I couldn't get back in for nine months. The nurse was gawking at me. She said, what happened to you? And she was continually wanting to feel the muscles in my arms. And he came in and he was floored and he said, what happened to you? <laughs> Where are you? The part of me was gone. Uh, and he started listening to me and when I told him, and by the way I do use supplements, he now puts in my prescription, I want you to take fish oil, I want you to take resveratrol, I want you to do this, this, and this. And he said, I'm not going to say I want you on a statin drug now, I'm more tolerant, but what are you doing about plaque in your arteries? And I just looked at him and said, is it possible not to have plaque in my arteries? And he started laughing and said, no. And I said, well, that's the end of that subject, isn't it? <laughs> so to have the admiration of the doctor and for a doctor to say, he didn't say he was wrong, but to accept what I was doing and I felt that was the right thing to do. It's a it's a wonderful feeling. So that's that's what I'm sharing with everybody. I know, and I agree. And I absolutely agree. And I did what you did. I did not take statin drugs, and I did get my cholesterol down. It was it wasn't as high as yours. It was over 200. I think it was 250, and I did get it down like you did. I do want to put disclaimer here. Ben and I are not medical doctors, and we are not saying not to see your doctors. We Neither of us are not saying that. So if you guys, anyone out here is listening to this to this video or podcast, because this is also a podcast, you, we recommend that anyone's having any sort of medical issues that you do see your doctor, anyone that's having chest pains or anything like that, please go to your nearest emergency room or dial 911. Um, so we are not your medical doctors. Please make sure you do see your regular doctor. We're not saying do not take your... Western meds, if you are on any sort of statin drugs or are prescribed by your physicians, please take your medications as prescribed. We're just giving you our personal journeys and our personal experiences. I just want to make sure that that disclaimer is in here. I want to make sure you follow your own doctor's orders. We're just giving you our personal journeys and our personal experiences. Um, that's very important that you follow your own, your own personal doctor's uh, suggestions. And obviously, this is you know you follow your own your own journeys. Um, we're just giving you our personal experiences. It's very important. Also, yeah, that, um, and, um, also please make sure since this is a podcast. Also, can you please let people know where they can find you? All right, they can find me online on my website at benwexler.com. That's B-E-N-W-E-C as in Charlie H. S as in shadow, L E R dot com. I'm also on LinkedIn and I'm on Google Plus with the same name. That is my name, it's my URL. So uh, you're welcome to come to the site and see it um, and find it there. And also, please share the title of your book once again. 
Change your body, change your life, exclamation point. Wonderful. And yes, and you know, I, I totally believe in both ends. I'm the type of person, I'm not a black or white mindset where you have to do Western medicine, you have to do Eastern. I believe that Eastern medicine is a wonderful precursor to not getting sick. I think there's so many things that are wonderful. I think flower essences, herbiology, homeopathy. I think there's so many wonderful tools out there like acupressure, massage, you know, acupuncture. There's so many wonderful modalities out there that are wonderful tools. And these things are great things that can help you not get sick. Eating healthy foods, reading the label, stick to natural healthy foods. Stay away from, you know, GMOs, genetically modified foods. You know, the healthier you eat, the less sick you're going to get. You understand these foods are covered with pesticides. They're not natural. Your body can't process them. Process them. Process the foods. Find out about the glycemic index, which makes your, your sugar levels go all over the charts. Keep your body alkalized. Disease can't grow in acid. We have, we, our, our society, we tend to eat a very acidic, acidic foods. Um, so try and keep your body more alkaline. I always tell people 80% 80, 80 alkaline and 20% 20 acidic. You know, so ch go, go really do some research. Do your homework. Find out more about these things. Um, you know, learn some things. Uh, there, there's, you know, we're on the internet, the, the information highway these days. Do some Googling. Find out some facts. You know, the more healthy you feed your body, exercise so important. You don't necessarily have to do heavy weights, which is very old school. Cross training, like you said, CrossFit is very, it's a lot more fun. It's less boring. It's less tedious. Go do some things. If that's not your thing, do something gentle, like, you know, Pilates, yoga. There's so many things out there. Go explore. Um, I'm sure, Ben, you have a lot more things to add to that. Well, um, I would agree with everything you said. How's that? <laughs> you, but, you would uh, or you would? I, I would agree with everything you said. Um, I, I really appreciate you doing this disclaimer, so I want to emphasize that as well. It's in my book as well. I Everything I was doing with was with the guidance of a doctor. I do use doctors, and, the, and they're very much part of what I'm doing. Um, it is very important to understand the importance of diet when you're exercising. That is rule number one. You have to feed the body and you have to fuel it. And so there are several references that I use in the book and I have a, a page on my website called Resources which lists all the books that I use for the research that I did before I started this. There's also a link to a YouTube channel that shows videos of how to do the different exercises. Um, I choose weight training. I'm doing heavy weights, and not because they're heavy, but because I'm getting stronger. I have a good teacher who is a master at seeing what is happening while it's happening, and he stops me when I'm doing something wrong. Um, I am part of a community that supports each other while we're working out. We work out in classes. So here's what I say, and this is probably the most important part of starting an exercise regime. Find a sport that you really want to be a part of and it, make it individual. I'm not talking about baseball. I'm not talking football, soccer, perhaps tennis. But the reason why I say that is because injuries happen when you're doing team sports and the emphasis there is not on the form or the structure of what you're doing, it, the emphasis is on winning the game. And so I chose weight training, it's a sport, but it's a support, it's supported in what I'm doing. You need to find someone to help you who will be your coach, who will stand by your side through the entire process of what you're doing. Mine is a brilliant man who has learned through self-experimentation but also self-education. He knows what he's talking about. Certifications are very important, but certifications don't necessarily mean that they have personal experience. So interview the person. Um, if you go to a traditional gym and work out and you're by yourself, there's not a lot of motivation in that. 
If you're on the treadmill, you're not exercising. Yes, you are getting the blood flowing, you're exercising the heart, and so on. But if you're not moving the entire body at all times and putting it under a lot of stress in the sport that you choose, I'm suggesting something more than that so that you use every muscle of the body and you get stronger from day to day and have the support of a mentor through the process. Um, I'm available to anybody through my website who wants my help in finding the right source. Um, just recently I wrote about um, revisiting the movie The Legend of Bagger Vance. Are you familiar with that movie, Carly? Yeah. And in that movie it's about the game of golf. Now, um, Golf is not one of the sports that I would recommend for this because um, I think it's a great game, but uh, I'm bringing it up because in that movie, Bagger Vance says uh, that golf is a wonderful game because it's a game that is to be played, not won. And the metaphor is life. So when you're choosing the sport, or the exercise that you're going to be involved with like I did, choose one where you are doing what it is in the sport, not trying to win something. The focus is on you, not a team, while being supported. So three things you said that's very important. One is a lot of gyms or even trainers, they may have certification. Here's I used to train trainers that came out of school for certification for a couple companies uh, back east. Just because, you, just because you come out of even college and you have a physiology degree doesn't mean A, you know how to train people. It's great to know all, all the anatomy and physiology of the body. Here's the thing, A, you know how to train people. And two, <laughs> just because you have a certification doesn't mean you know what you're doing. Okay, There's a couple other things added to that. So yes, interview people and know that they've actually had some time training people. A lot of people in their gym and they're standing by their client and they're just going one, two, three, four. I've seen this. I've watched trainers. That was my job. My job was to actually watch, watch trainers and watch how they interacted with the people and half the time I'd be seeing this. You know, they'd be bored. They'd be staring at clocks, all this other They wouldn't be watching the client. They're supposed to be watching the client and watching their form. Are they in the proper body alignment? Are they doing the exercise the proper form? Everything in lifting weights, by the way, is body alignment. It's like watching a dancer. When yes. they're dancing, everything has to be in the proper alignment so they don't have injuries. If you ever watch a dancer's body and literally watch something like a ballet, a ballerina, and you, and you watch these dancers on stages, they're flowing, and you look, it looks so effortless. I mean, they're actually leaping in the air. When they land, there's not a sound when they land on that stage, okay? And it looks like effortlessly nothing, okay? They, <laughs> so when you're lifting weights, okay, you have to know what you're doing or you can cause massive damage. I started lifting weights in 1982. I'm turning 50 this year, okay? So I've been lifting weights since 1982. I've also been training and training other people since 1982. I no, I no longer um, physically train people. Um, I do consult and put programs together for people, and I sort of train, but not like one-on-one -on -one with people in the gym anymore. Okay. But my, my point is, you have to know what you're doing, and that trainer has to know what he's doing, and they have to be watching you and know that you're doing proper body form, or you can have literally serious detrimental side effects that will harm your body for the rest of your life back injuries, knee injuries, all sorts of problems. Um, so that is really important. The other thing I said that's really important is you need to have a cheerleading section, someone that's got your back and, and you have that, that incentive to want to continue what you're doing. So like you said, you're either having that trainer that's, that's your motivator or a group. You're in a group setting where you're in a group class and everyone's motivating each other. Or you're in an in internet group where everyone's having to kind of say, hey, I did this today. And, and you're jotting down in, in the group where, you know, I did X amount of sets and everyone's cheerleading you on and saying, hey, great, kudos, I'm, I'm now up to this level. So you need that daily support. Otherwise, you're not going to do it. Bottom line, you're just not going to do it. So, right. you know, 
if you go on my Facebook page, I actually have a whole section of my fitness stuff that I've done. Um, like I know I'm not, I don't look like that right now because I just went through three more surgeries. Yet I know that, you know what, I will look like that again because my whole life has been, you know, I used to be a fitness model, my whole life has been, I've had surgeries and then, you know, I had gained a little weight because I, I couldn't do anything because I wasn't allowed to and they mm -hmm. replaced another joint or whatever and then, you know what, six um, six months after that, when they replaced it, I, I was back and do what I needed to do and I looked exactly like I wanted to be. So A, it's mindset, you need to want to do this and be committed to doing it and 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 putting yourself in the setting where you have that that group support um, and the first step is really making a commitment, your, commitment to yourself to doing it but the woe is me and the whole victim energy doesn't work you have to choose to want to do it for yourself at some point you have to choose to want to do it for yourself and that's end of my soapbox well that's a good one too and one thing I want to add to anyone who is our my age um, and start listing things that are wrong with their bodies that they can't do it. What I've learned from this expert, and his name's Nate, uh, shortly after I started, I was making so much progress, I was really, really taken back when he said to me, there's going to be a strongman competition in around Labor Day of that year. Do you want to be part of that? I said, me? He said, why me? And he said, well, let me put it this way. You will get immediate props because of your age. <laughs> so um, I trained, and I trained heavily to go into that uh, strongman competition, and I went in there having done extreme workouts, and then the week right before the competition, we didn't do any training at all. The goal was to be so hungry to lift when we get to the competition that we're going to go in there and lift real heavy. During the time of inactivity, there was so much difference in my body not working out than it was working out, I couldn't sleep very well. And I remember one night I turned and tossed in the bed with my neck rather than the proper way, and it caused a shoulder muscle to be pulled. I went into the competition and I started the overhead press and one arm was pushing up, the other one was going down and I couldn't tell uh, and I dropped the weights. I came out of that with, my, with numbness in my fingers and my doctor who was in Chicago, I was in the suburbs, said, Emile, I want you to be in the, he wanted me to go to the emergency room and get an MRI. Um, some people steered me towards a doctor more local to be there for me because I couldn't get to my doctor because it was Labor Day holiday. I had the MRI and what they found was I have two herniated discs in my neck. It was not caused by the weight training. This is something that is lifelong, is degenerative disc disease. Every human being on earth has that. But I want you to know that I was doing this lifting with two herniated discs and never knew about it. I ended up having a shoulder injury and now I'm at the end of the recovery of it. It took a little over a year. I had physical therapy. But the important thing to understand is that I, my doctors, the medical doctors said I should not be doing deadlifts with those herniated discs. The expert who has experience said you have to build your core, you have to build the muscles to support the neck. I am now deadlifting 335 pounds. I don't have any pain. I don't have any issues. I'm not saying the doctor was wrong, but what I'm saying is that I'm overcoming with intelligent experience a lot of physical um, problems by getting stronger. It's, and that's what's really important, is for us to really take charge and understand with the right help that we can become stronger individuals and have a stronger life as a result. Herniated discs are, can be very painful in the lower back, and that's something that has to be paid attention to. But I've seen people who, there's one person who had a snapped, um, what is a, um, 
the muscle in the heel, the Achilles tendon, it snapped fully. He had surgery. Within 90 days, he was going back and doing squats and deadlifts. You're not supposed to be doing that right after having that kind of surgery. But with the right guidance and the right help and form of physical therapy, you can get back in the game. So my, my message is get stronger and do what you need to do to get stronger with the right help. Well, again, it goes back to mindset. A lot of it's all mindset. You have to have the right mindset and, and, and choose to want to do something and anything, is, anything you can overcome if you have the right mindset. Right. So, anyways, we have come to our time. Um, thank you so much for joining me. So, once again, please let everyone know where they can find you. All right. You can find me at my website, which is my name, benwexler.com. That's B-E-N-W-E-C as in Charlie, H, S as in Shadow, L-E-R.com. And thank you so much for joining us, Benjamin. And you have been on Community Voices with Carla Thorne. Thank you so much for being with me. And you can always find me at carlyalissathorne.com. I wish everyone a beautiful evening. Thank you so much once again for being with us. I always enjoy bringing you valuable content and valuable people, bringing you valuable tips and tools for your life. And I look forward to being with you next week. Have a great evening, everyone.